Good morning and welcome to today's reflection for Friday the 24th of July. My name's John and I'm a licensed lay minister here in Walton on Thames. Our reading today is from Luke chapter 22 verses 1 to 13 and it concerns the preparations for the Passover meal and Judas's decision to betray Jesus to the Jewish authorities. If you'd like to read the passage, please pause the video now. And before we start, let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word in the Bible. As we read and take in your word, help us to understand its meaning and interpret what it says to us today. Now, I'd like you to imagine yourself as one of the followers of Jesus during his ministry here on earth. If, like me, you find it a little difficult to imagine things, you might find it helpful to close your eyes while you listen. You are a follower of Jesus, not the first of his followers, not the closest to him, but close enough and dedicated enough to be chosen as one of his inner circle, one of the twelve apostles. You followed him from the early days for nearly three years now. You've witnessed his miracles, changing water into wine, feeding thousands of people with a handful of bread and fish, calming the storm and even bringing a dead man back to life. You've heard his teachings, teachings to the crowds that followed him, and teachings just for you and the other eleven. You've been sent out in his name, You've preached his message of repentance and love. You yourself have cast out demons and healed sick people in his name. You've prayed with him last thing at night and first thing in the morning. You've given up work, family and friends to do this because you love and admire this man Jesus and the message he brings. Enough to follow him around the country, not knowing where the next meal is coming from or where you might lay your head that night. You've arrived at Jerusalem in time for the Passover feast. You've seen the crowds praising Jesus, praising God. You were there when Jesus cleaned out the temple courts, and you've heard him preach there every day. People are arriving in Jerusalem from all over Israel and beyond, hearing his message hearing him argue with the scribes and the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, urging people to see their faith in a different light, undermining the long-established patterns of authority. More people than ever before are hearing his message. He's challenging the Jewish leaders on their home turf. No doubt, word of the highly charged atmosphere in the city is reaching the ears of the Roman governor. Pilot. In the busy town, you bump into people you know, family friends, people from your hometown. You haven't seen them for a while, there's a lot of catching up to do. There's your old friend, who always wanted to become a rabbi, to learn and to teach the law. He's worried that Jesus' teaching will bring the whole established system of religion crashing down. He isn't exactly against what Jesus is saying, but he doesn't think it's helpful. Then there's your father's old friend, who you must stop and talk to, who remembers the rebellions of the past, who urges caution. No rocking the boat, no upsetting the Romans. Keep your head down, or it won't end well. There's the girl you knew from school, the one you always admired, Maybe if things had gone differently, you'd be settled down with her in your old hometown. But since you left, she's joined the Zealots. She's planning the next revolt. She's here in Jerusalem, looking for the spark to start the revolution. To her, Jesus' teachings against the steady-as-she-goes Jewish establishment are an opportunity, but also a threat, as his lily-livered message of peace and love of rendering to Caesar that which is Caesar's, makes Jesus just another disappointing sellout, and you along with him. Any one of these conversations might have made you think twice. It might have brought to the surface some simmering resentment that was, 
that there were those Jesus called before he called you. Those that seemed to get on with him better. Was there anything in what your friend the rabbi, or your dad's friend, or your former heart's desire had said? Where was Jesus' teaching leading? Was it going to cause harm, as well as good, to those you loved? Your friend is a rabbi. Maybe he could introduce you to one of the Jewish leaders who you could chat things over with. And before you know it, you've been persuaded that the best course of action for all your friends is to have Jesus removed from the scene for a while, to quieten everything down. Maybe the Jewish leaders would talk him round. Maybe the Romans would imprison him for a bit. Nothing serious. But it can't be done in front of the crowds. It needs somewhere quiet. You know where Jesus is going to be tomorrow night. So you pass the information on. The money they give you might come in useful later, so you take it. You didn't mean it to be this way, but somehow it's happened. And now Jesus knows. Of course he knows. He knows everything. He tells you to go ahead and do it. He knew that one of you would do it. Maybe he always knew it would be you even if you didn't. And now it's too late. And now, here we are, 2,000 years later. It was too late for Judas Iscariot. But the events that he set in train, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, mean that for us, it's not too late. Maybe we've done things for good or bad motives, for which we're truly sorry. But we have the opportunity to confess, to repent, to ask forgiveness, and to be forgiven. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, our story can be different. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that we have the opportunity every week, every day even, to turn to you, to confess the things that we've done, or the things that we should have done, but didn't quite get round to. Thank you that there is forgiveness. Thank you that by your death and resurrection, we are redeemed. Help us, Lord, to live our lives every day, in the way that you would have us live. And thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness that is there for us when we fall short. Amen. I hope you have a really pleasant day today.